and welcome to Financial Intelligence. In this video, I want to discuss why the US government understates the inflation numbers. Currently, the Consumer Price Index, or the CPI for short, which is the official metric used by the US government to track inflation, stands at 5%. However, this is a gross underestimation of the actual level of inflation in the US. I'm going to show you a simple proof. If you like the type of content that I provide, subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up and also hit the notification bell so that you won't miss any of my future videos. According to the US government, over the last 12 months, the US National Home Price Index has risen by 18.6%, the strongest year-long growth in the history of the series. Other third-party indices show similar rises in rent prices. The US Bureau of Labor Statistics, on the other hand, states that housing costs account for roughly 30% of average annual expenditures in the US. It is simple math. Assuming that prices of other items remain constant, if housing costs which amount to 30% of total household costs have gone up by 18.6%, we can conclude that the total living expenses must have gone up by at least 6%. In other words, the inflation rate is at least 6% in the US. Because of the way shelter costs enter into the CPI calculations, these increases in owned home and rental costs have not yet contributed much to overall inflation. I have created another video where I have discussed how the government has manipulated the CPI definition over time to systematically report smaller inflation numbers. I will add the link to that video up here and in the description box below so that you can check it out yourself. There are three main reasons why the US government is intentionally lying about the real inflation numbers. In no particular order, here are the three reasons I have come up with. Let me know if there are others that you can think of uh, that I have not included here. The number one reason is that inflation can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. I've tried to capture this self-reinforcing cycle in this chart. If the government reports the actual inflation numbers, it will create a general widespread feeling of panic and urgency among the population. This in turn could entice workers to negotiate and demand higher wages to compensate for the negative impact of higher inflation on their living standards. When wages go up, the prices of goods and services produced by people will go up accordingly. And when the prices of goods and services go up, this will perpetuate the cycle. The US government has been printing massive amounts of new money. On January 6, 2020, the US Federal Reserve had around $14 trillion. On January 4, 2021, the number increased to $6.7 trillion. To put this into perspective, 30% of all dollars in circulation today were printed last year. However, the government hopes to manage the inflation rates by keeping average Americans uninformed about the real impact on inflation on their standard of living. The second reason why the government is misleading the population is because inflation has a direct impact on the US government's unfunded liabilities. Unfunded liabilities are US government's debt obligations for which the government does not have enough funds set aside to pay. For example, consider Social Security, which is a federal program that has been set up to provide some level of support to retirees and disabled workers. Another example is Medicare, which is a US federal government 
health insurance program that subsidizes health care services for people aged 65 or older. Both Social Security and Medicare are unfunded liabilities. In other words, these two programs are essentially financial promises that the US government has made to deliver, but in reality, it has no funds to fulfill those promises at the moment. The US government is hoping to be able to meet these obligations using the future federal tax revenue incomes. However, the US government is barely able to meet these obligations as is. Based on a legislation enacted in 1973, the US government is obligated to provide for cost of living adjustments or COLAs. With COLAs, Social Security and Supplemental Security Income benefits keep pace with inflation. The latest COLA is 5.9% for Social Security benefits and SSI payments, which is based on the CPI figures reported by the government. If the US government reported the actual inflation numbers instead of the CPI numbers, the latest COLA would have been around 10% to 15%. This means that it would have cost the government even more to sustain these programs. If due to inflation or hyperinflation, the cost of Social Security and Medicare programs increase even further, there's no way that the US government could possibly support these services. Therefore, the US government has no option but to understate the real level of inflation in the United States. The third reason why the US government is misrepresenting the inflation numbers is to avoid creating social unrest. Today, after decades of nearly invisible inflation in the US, many Americans have not really experienced hyperinflation. Nearly half of the US population was born after 1981, the last year of double-digit consumer price increases. However, marches and boycotts over rising cost of living could become a part of the social landscape as it did in the 60s and 70s. Fed up with the increasing cost of living, Consumers used to march outside of supermarkets with placards demanding lower prices. If the US government keeps printing money, hyperinflation will get severe enough that it could cause a lot of unhappiness and social unrest. Therefore, the US government has every incentive to understate the real inflation numbers to avoid social unrest. I hope that you liked this video. If you have any recommendation or suggestion, add them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel and also hit the notification bell so that you won't miss any of my future videos. Thank you and take care.